Diddy Jakes was hanging out at a rapper and twerking party that Puff Daddy held. He's sitting right there, OTD Snake. Why would a religious man himself be at a party which it ain't nothing but sin? Is See, they're up in another uh, hemisphere than the too. They're very insulated. They can do what they want. Young will. Miami has publicly discussed T.D. Jakes' unexpected social interactions with Diddy, suggesting that Jakes has been spending nights with the rapper. This revelation has sparked widespread speculation and scrutiny regarding the nature of their relationship and Jakes' behavior during these outings. There are emerging accusations against T.D. Jakes, with claims from multiple individuals alleging inappropriate behavior. These allegations have intensified following reports that Jakes' son, Jermaine Jakes, was arrested under unusual circumstances, which some speculate may be linked to the broader scandal involving his father. The media has been rife with speculation about the implications of these allegations. Some reports suggest that the relationship between Jakes and Diddy could involve more than mere friendship, leading to a deeper investigation into both figures. With the public response has been one of shock and disbelief, particularly given Jakes's previously untarnished reputation as a spiritual leader. Young Miami has made startling claims about T.D. Jakes, a prominent pastor, alleging that he has been spending nights with music mogul Diddy. These allegations have sparked widespread speculation and controversy surrounding the nature of Jake's relationship with Diddy. There are reports of leaked footage and audio recordings that purportedly show T.D. Jakes in compromising situations with Diddy. These leaks have caused significant embarrassment and outrage among Jake's supporters, with some celebrities even mocking him in viral videos. In the face of these allegations, T.D. Jakes has vehemently denied the rumors, calling them categorically untrue and unfounded. He has passionately addressed the accusations during his sermons, seemingly hoping to dispel any doubts among his followers. However, some argue that his defensive stance and emotional outbursts may actually be an admission of guilt. Adding to the scandal, T.D. Jakes' son, Jermaine Jakes, was arrested under unusual circumstances in 2009 on charges of indecent exposure. The graphic details of the arrest have further fueled speculation about the Jakes family's involvement in inappropriate behavior. There are reports of leaked footage and emails that purportedly show T.D. Jakes in compromising situations with Diddy. These leaks have caused significant embarrassment and outrage among Jakes supporters. Some reports even suggest that Jakes may have been involved in Diddy's notorious parties known for their lavish and questionable activities. In the face of these allegations, T.D. Jakes has vehemently denied the rumors, calling them categorically untrue and unfounded. He has passionately addressed the accusations during his sermons, seemingly hoping to dispel any doubts among his followers. As the investigation into T.D. Jakes' alleged misconduct continues, more victims have come forward with similar stories. There are claims that Jakes may have been involved in sexual abuse and exploitation of minors, with a young man seeking legal counsel against the pastor for alleged incidents that occurred when he was underage. The public is left to grapple with the disturbing truth behind the facade of fame and fortune, wondering what other skeletons may be hidden in the closets of the rich and powerful. As the scandal continues to unfold, the integrity and public image of both Jakes and Diddy remain in question. The controversy began when rapper Young Miami made allegations on social media, claiming that T.D. Jakes had been spending nights with Diddy. This sparked widespread speculation about the nature of their relationship and drew attention to Jakes' connections with the hip-hop mogul. A TikTok influencer named Mia made shocking claims that she had provided the FBI with incriminating footage from Diddy's parties, which allegedly included Jakes. This video suggested that Jakes was involved in wild gatherings and had affairs with various men, further fueling rumors about his relationship with Diddy. Mia's video also mentioned a burner phone belonging to Diddy's late ex-girlfriend, Kim Porter, which supposedly contained evidence of the alleged activities. Reports indicated that this phone, along with video footage and emails, had been turned over to federal authorities, intensifying the scrutiny on Jakes. In response to the allegations, T.D. Jakes has made several public appearances during which he has attempted to clear his name. He broke down in tears during one televised appearance, expressing his distress over the accusations and emphasizing his commitment to his ministry. Some observers interpreted his emotional response as a sign of guilt, while others viewed it as a genuine plea for understanding. The allegations quickly went viral, 
with many social media users commenting on the unusual pairing of a prominent pastor and a hip-hop mogul. The public's reaction has been mixed, with some defending Jake's and others expressing skepticism about his integrity given the nature of the allegations. A new lawsuit exposes. How did he traumatize Justin Bieber? Justin's friends say he's spiraling. And it's a scary thing. Yeah. And it's not something that we're trying to scare people, but it's 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 a thought that re it, it forces you to go. Because you were forced, you and I were forced at a, at a young age, me because I was doing a lot of drugs and I was actually so deep into it and no one really knew that I was, you know, my security was checking my pulse at night to see if I was alive, you know? Funny? It's funny to you guys? Oh, is it funny to you guys? Oh, get out of here. I'm so sorry. Get out of here, bro. Seriously, get out of here. It's not funny, bro. Hello, Mita? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Justin Bieber has welcomed his first child, Jack Blues Bieber, with his wife Haley. However, reports suggest that Justin is still struggling with mental health due to unresolved trauma from his early days in the music industry. Rumors suggest Justin was victimized by P. Diddy and other industry figures, and Diddy is facing a new lawsuit from a man who claims Diddy groped him at a party. Fans are raising alarm about Justin's past experiences with Diddy, and sources close to Justin are concerned about his behavior. No Justin has severe anger issues that he hasn't addressed, and his behavior seems to stem from something horrifying that happened to him at the hands of Diddy and other industry figures. Derek Lee Cardello Smith, an inmate in Diddy's jail, has managed to break the news about his plans to sell any of his properties or major real estate. Cardello Smith claims that he was spiked and graped by Diddy at one of his parties in the 90s. Diddy and his legal team recently visited Card Cardello Smith in jail and tried to offer him a $2.3 million settlement. Carello Smith claims that in 1997, he was working as a bartender at a Detroit restaurant when he was invited to a party at the Holiday Inn. He initially had a positive impression of Diddy but later became involved in a dark turn when he showed interest in him. When Diddy offered him another drink, Smith, thinking it was just another whiskey, drank it but soon felt dizzy and passed out. Diddy allegedly revealed that he had added something to the drink and told Smith that he would get what he wanted. I think because she was raised Christian and I think she, they found out that like, I, I think it was an arranged marriage, I'm pretty sure. I'm not, <laughs> looking back now, I'm like, it was definitely an arranged marriage. Like, they set this whole thing up. In his memoir memoir, LaReed made strange comments about Justin's physical appearance, comparing him to a beautiful woman. Many fans believe Justin was used and traumatized as a young star, and some speculate that he tried to drop hints about his past. For example, Justin's music video for his 2020 track Yummy shows him at a fancy dinner party with rich older people and a band of young musicians. The video ends with an old man hanging around in the background, and a slice of cake transforms into a photo of young Justin prompting fans to wonder if Justin was dropping cryptic hints about shady things he's been through in the music industry. More creepy videos have surfaced of Justin partying with Diddy and his industry friends, with Diddy encouraging Justin to drink alcohol, revealing his complete inebriation and pants slipping down. I want to live a life that's closer to God than ever before. Absolutely. Justin? <laughs> Samesies. <laughs> Samesies. <laughs> Carl? Uh, I want to... <laughs> I want to get close like that wisp <laughs> is to Justin. No, I, I want to get better. That's why I we all I just want to love people more. I just want to love Carl more. <laughs> You're doing a good job with that. You're so, man. Justin, this is your second time at Hillsong Song Conference. Yes. And what's different this time about being here? Um, I just think my faith grows every day. Yeah. Um, so my faith is stronger than two years ago. In a recent clip, Trey Song and Odell Beckham Jr. were seen partying with Justin with Justin appearing to be on his knees in front of Odell. Rumor suggests Diddy pushed Justin into substance addiction and Justin admitted to using substances as a way to escape from his troubles.
the decisions taken by Brian Houston, the founder and leader of the Hillsong Church. Man, it makes some people out there so angry. Decisions made while he was head of the Pentecostal movement, the Assemblies of God in Australia. Devil does go around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The predator was his own father, Frank Houston, the high-profile pastor who used his position of power to abuse young boys. Confess your sin to the Lord and he'll blot it out. Justin Bieber, a singer and actor, had no trusted adult companions and was often taken advantage of by celebrity churches. After being traumatized by Diddy, Justin sought comfort in religion but ended up in sketchy celebrity churches. Last year, Justin hired TriStar Entertainment, a business management company owned by Lou Taylor, Britney Spears' former manager, who is rumored to have orchestrated Britney's conservatorship. Internet detectives discovered that Lou Taylor was not just a business manager, but also a board member at Justin's old Church Hill song and married to Rob Taylor, a pastor who founded Calvary Chapel. The church has a history of controversies and scandals, including serious crimes against young people. This situation highlights the heartbreaking situation Justin faced and the potential dangers of celebrity connections. You know, my security was checking my pulse at night to see if I was alive, you know? Hillsong Church experienced a significant comeback in the mid-20s due to celebrity endorsements, including Justin Bieber and his wife Haley. Justin and his wife Haley were regulars at Hillsong for years, and in 2014, Justin moved in with his pastor Carl Lent for a few months. Justin was baptized in a bizarre ceremony in the bathtub of former NBA star Tyson Chandler. However, strange photos and videos circulated online, showing Justin and Carl looking too close for comfort, and an interview where Justin appeared high as a kite. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. You have all these people around me just kind of hanging on, wanting stuff from me, knowing that, like, I was living this lifestyle that they also wanted to live, drinking, smoking. The video showed Justin and Carl swimming in a pool, seemingly about to kiss. <laughs> Justin's friendship with Carl deteriorated in November 2020 after Carl was fired from Hillsong for cheating on his wife. Instead of leaving the celebrity church scene, Justin and Haley joined a sketchy megachurch called Chirk Home. The rumors suggest they are in an arranged marriage, which Justin himself has joked about. Happy birthday, Justin! Happy birthday! Welcome to the family, Jack! Justin Bieber's arranged marriage to Haley Baldwin has been rumored to involve Judah Smith, the lead pastor at Church Home and a close friend of Stephen Baldwin's father. Stephen was reportedly interested in Haley marrying a major pop star, so Stephen reportedly asked Judah to help him. Stephen promised Judah an incentive once Haley became Mrs. Bieber, ensuring that donation dollars flowed into Church Home. Another twist involving shady churches and Diddy and Justin rumors is Lou Taylor's involvement on Church Home's board of directors, and her name disappeared from the website after her company TriStar got tangled up in recent allegations against Diddy. A lawsuit filed by producer Lil Rod against Diddy revealed that TriStar executive Robin Greenhill was handling payments for Diddy's 10 workers. Justin's recent Instagram posts and public outbursts have raised concerns among fans, who believe he might be stuck and unable to speak out against Diddy due to his involvement with this celebrity church. Justin's friends are expressing concern that he is in a dark place, even though he just welcomed his first child. Bieber's temper has been on edge lately, and friends are pushing him to seek help for his anger issues. Justin was recently caught on camera, having a meltdown at a group of young fans trying to snap a pic of him in the lobby of the Waldorf Aria in Beverly Hills. 14-year-old Justin Bieber walks into my office as a gift from Usher, who called a few minutes before and said, hey, I'm coming to your office at 3 o'clock. I have a very special gift for you. And he shows up with Justin Bieber, and Justin sits down and plays piano. Then he picks up his guitar and plays. 
And I'm like, oh my God, right? Are you serious? And that day, we made a deal to sign Justin Bieber also. Justin Bieber has been reportedly experiencing stress and emotional issues, with many in his life seeking help to manage his anger. However, Justin is still seeking help from celebrity churches rather than mental health professionals, according to sources close to him. Justin and his wife Haley are members of the controversial Church Home Church, which may be one reason why he is refusing to seek real help for his rumored trauma. Justin's current state is more about mental health struggles than physical problems, and insiders from his circle believe that his current state is more about mental health struggles than physical problems. Some fans believe that Justin's past trauma, such as being thrown into stardom at a young age and being around Diddy and other monsters unsupervised, is the root cause of his current state. I then went to get another drink and Sean asked me if I needed something else. I said no and he said here, drink this one and I thought it was another glass of Jim Beam so I took it because I had sat one down in the other room and then I drank some more and I stayed sitting there and began getting drowsy and started to pass out and then Sean Combs said to me, I added a little something to it for you, I will get that from you anyway, one way or another, I then passed out. Some fans believe that Justin's past trauma is eating him alive and that he is struggling to cope with everything that happened to him when he was young. Some fans believe that Justin's past trauma is related to Diddy and what allegedly happened to him when he was starting out in the industry. So if Drake sings, says a few words on a song, Universal Music Group owns that. What did Kendrick do? Kendrick Lamar took his copyrights off of his own music so people could use that and make money off of it. So you can see clearly who's for the people and who's not. Whatever he got with Universal, I don't trust it. I'ma just tell you, I do not trust that big headline that went out about 400, 500 million a year. And it's weird, it's wrong. In what regard? Nobody at much. his level towards that much. much. Oh. You don't. Unless you have to. Unless, unless you unless have to contract. do it. Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. Wow. <laughs> He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy. Drake has been hit with a copyright strike from Universal Music Group after dropping unreleased tracks, including collaborations with 21 Savage and L, as part of his 100 gigs data dump. Rumors suggest tension between Drake and Universal Music Group is brewing, but Drake cannot do much about it as he signed a 360 deal with Universal Music Group in 2021, which means he cannot make moves without their approval. This has caused Drake to spiral and is in a bad headspace as he doesn't own any of his music. Fans are blaming Drake for being more focused on money than the love of hip hop or culture. The real issue is Drake spiraling because he sold his soul to the label, leaving him stuck. I stay scheming, Drake says. Tell Lucy and I said, I'm tearing holes in my budget. Tell so Lucy and I said, I'm tearing holes in my budget. Did Drake call you up after that and say, hey, I need more money for my project? When, if ever Drake or whenever Drake calls up and says he needs more money for his project, I give it to him. <laughs> That's Prince was open about his affiliation with Warner Brothers and spent decades fighting for the ownership of his masters. This has never happened before. I say every, every Jew is going to just like really embrace Well, the here's the thing. There are Jews like my dad who like cling to like the biggest reaches. Yeah. Like, you know who's Jewish? Matt Damon. I'm like, no, he's not, dad. He's definitely not Jewish. And like people reach and the fact yeah. that you actually identify, yeah. that's going to be like, that's going to be big. Yeah, it's going to be great. You're doing something that I could never do. You're In 2014, Prince gained control of his masters, but less than two years later, he passed away from a suspected OD. This could be a coincidence, but the entertainment industry is full of mystery. Drake, on the other hand, is caught in a similar web of control with Universal Music Group UMG. In 2021, there was buzz about Drake landing a huge deal with UNG, rumored to be between $4,500 million and $500 million. Drake himself revealed that his deal is on a different level, with lines like $500 million for Aubrey. However, there is also a conspiracy theory that Drake is getting special treatment in the rap game due to his cultural background, giving him an edge over other artists. The reason why it became such a big deal back then is ever since my third album, uh, I wasn't really taking large advances from the recording companies. I was recording the albums myself in my own studio. So the way I looked at it, 
I owned the work because I paid for it. And I did all the work. I created it, so I felt like it should belong to me. That said, the、um, companies felt otherwise, and they would always hold this contract up and say, "Well, you signed it." And I say, "Well, I understand that. It's not like I want to leave. I just want to, you know, talk about this thing and see if we can't make it more fair." Of course, they wouldn't change because if they changed, they wouldn't really exist. It shouldn't be a situation where they own the album or the work. It's a, we're talking about intellectual copyright. If they're going to be indeed a delivery service, then that's fine. But even FedEx doesn't say that they own the thing that they ship. You know, right? Because ultimately, it keeps us apart, and、uh, it keeps the people in power. My elders up in here. Let's talk about all this and distribution service. I mean, what do we really need record companies for? I mean, really. An interview with Universal Music Group CEO revealed that Drake can receive any amount he requests from the label. Kendrick Lamar don't like the industry, particularly because the industry robs artists all the time. If Drake was smart and really that powerful of an artist and actually believed in himself, he could have went independent. And pocketed all of that money for himself, but he loves the industry. That's how I see it. Kendrick has been hinting at a rumored PDF file ring that could extend to the top of the music industry, including Drake's label bosses. He mentioned that Drake's Toronto mansion, nicknamed the Embassy, was about to be raided, referencing the March raids on Diddy's properties in LA and Miami. This suggests that Drake is involved in the same depraved activities Diddy is currently being investigated for. Kendrick referenced the raids on Diddy's houses because one of the Diddy lawsuits was named as a rumored accomplice and enabler, the Universal Music Group CEO. In the lawsuit against Diddy filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, Lil Rod alleged that Diddy had hidden cameras in every room of his house and that he had recordings of celebrities, athletes, label executives, and politicians. He also claimed that Grange, along with other defendants, aided and induced Shan X trafficking venture, providing vast sums of cash. That made Diddy's criminal venture possible. In May, news broke that Universal Music Group and their CEO would be removed from Lil Rod's lawsuit. This was expected, as Universal Music Group is the largest music label in the world. However, when Universal Music Group thought they had dodged the bullet in Lil Rod's lawsuit, it happened that same month. Kendrick's feud with Drake started to heat up, initially appearing to be just another regular rap rivalry. Kendrick warned Drake not to spread rumors about him unless he was ready for his own skeletons to come out. However, Drake kept stirring the pot and dragging Kendrick's family into the mix, leading to Kendrick absolutely annihilating Drake. Kendrick threatened to dig even deeper, potentially exposing the entire industry, and it is likely that Universal Music Group heard him loud and clear. The last thing Lucian Garcia did was to call him a certified PDF file and threaten to expose the entire industry. In conclusion, Kendrick's rumored PDF file ring may extend beyond Drake and reach the top of the music industry, with the potential to expose the entire industry. Kendrick has been involved in the drama surrounding Drake and Ovo, primarily due to his concerns about profit. Ovo handed Drake a half billion dollar 360 deal, one of the biggest deals in music history. However, Drake has been making risky moves, including a massive 100 gigabytes data leak that included unreleased songs. This led to Universal Music Group UNG intervening and striking Drake with a copyright strike, forcing the removal of three new tracks from his official site. The situation has led to speculation about Drake's complicated relationship with UNG, especially after signing the massive 360 deal in 2021. Fans argue that Drake should have stayed independent when he had the chance, as quick money isn't always good. Drake was a free agent at one point, but now he's stuck playing by UNG's rules. Some fans believe that this is proof that Drake is a $400 million slave, while others feel eerie about the business. While the 360 deal sounds good on the surface, it has shaken some people's perceptions of the industry. Some worry about Dot versus the industry, while others are concerned about Drake's safety. Kendrick's reference to PDF allegations suggests that the rabbit hole goes deeper, suggesting that there may be some sketchy business happening behind the scenes with those pulling Drake strings. How do you think he died? You've been quoted as saying you you believe it may have been murder. Do you still think that? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Why are you so sure? I would、sure? never ever think differently because first of all, Michael told me that they were going to murder him. He was afraid. He was, was afraid for his life. Who was going to murder him? 
the people that were involved in his life, the people that were controlling him. Life, where people come into your life, wiggle their way in, control you, manipulate, control your funds, your finances, everything that you have, and you must do what they tell you to do. And that's what Michael was going through. And he knew that everything that was happening to him was not kosher, it wasn't right, and it disturbed him greatly. And he kept saying it over and over and over again. Sitting at the mayor's side in a place usually reserved for the village attorneys, two unfamiliar faces. This is Chicago federal criminal defense attorney, Bo Brindley, along with his law partner, Ed McDavid. Two witnesses chose to lie, implicate this man, and drag him through this experience from 2019 until today. David and others were aware of Kelly's sexual contact and sexual acts with minors. Until my last memory was me waking up in his room. Tiffany Hurd, the controversial mayor of Dotton's Illinois, has brought in a highly renowned lawyer to handle a significant case, raising questions about her intentions and the controversies surrounding her lavish spending and chaotic board meetings. Mayor Hanyard is in a situation where she feels like she's under attack, because she is. Tiffany Henyard Dalton, a self-proclaimed leader, has faced numerous scandals, including unethical spending and heated exchanges during board meetings. Now, she has hired a lawyer with a colorful history, Bo Brinton, who has defended some of the most controversial figures in America. Tiffany's career is already shaky due to her past, but her presence could potentially end her career. I would say I'm a definite true citizen of Dalton, and I'm a survivor. Tiffany Horde has hired Bo Brinley, a lawyer with a history of shady dealings and allegations of bribery. Brinley's connection to R. Kelly's manager, who was embroiled in a child Pete case, raises serious questions about his ethics. Tiffany Horde chose Brinley due to his reputation for scamming clients and bribery. Brinley's methods have always been questionable, with numerous reports accusing him of coaching witnesses, manipulating evidence, and even bribing officials to win his cases. In September 2015, Brindley was accused of coaching witnesses to lie under oath obstruction of justice and conspiracy. The 21-count indictment focused on six federal criminal trials where Brindley was the defense counsel. One of the government's key pieces of evidence was a set of question and answer sheets that Brindley used to prepare witnesses for trial. According to the Chicago Tribune, Brindley testified that he modeled the QA sheets on ones that prosecutors use to prepare witnesses appearing before a grand jury. Brindley was acquitted, but the trial left lingering doubts about his methods and ethics. Attorneys have a duty to zealously represent their clients and explain the law and how it applies to the facts of the case. However, when explaining how specific testimony might affect a case, attorneys can enter a great area between imparting legal knowledge and the duty to elicit truthful testimony. Brindley has also been accused of scamming his own clients, taking thousands of dollars without delivering on his promises. Google reviews show a laundry list of complaints from former clients who claim he took their money and disappeared. One reviewer even said they couldn't understand how he's still an attorney, while another wrote that he is a no-good crook and a criminal horrible at his job. Tiffany Hoard's decision to hire Brindley raises questions about her judgment and what she might be hiding. Brindley's connection to the R. Kelly case raises questions about Tiffany Hoard's judgment and what it means for her political future. Galdo Law Group says it's not being paid, so it'll stop appearing in federal and state court and defending Dalton and Henyard in 22 different lawsuits. R. Kelly's former business manager, Daryl McDavid, was a key figure in the efforts to cover up Kelly's crimes. McDavid was responsible for paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to individuals who had access to tapes that allegedly showed Kelly engaging in intimate acts with a 14-year-old girl. Charles Freeman testified that he was hired by McDavid to recover these tapes which painted a disturbing picture of the lengths Kelly and his associates went to protect the disgraced singer. Freeman made several copies of the tape, fearing that McDavid and the private investigator Jack Palladino would not pay him the full amount promised. Freeman's testimony was damning not only for McDavid but also for Brendan, who was leading McDavid's defense. Brendan's strategy involved discrediting Freeman by portraying him as an extortionist, a tactic that drew significant criticism. The case highlighted Brendan's willingness to employ aggressive and morally questionable tactics to defend his clients, further solidifying his reputation as a lawyer who would do anything to win. In 2012, a woman testified that R. Kelly's former business manager, Daryl McDavid, threatened her life after she returned the illicit tape. 
The tape had been taken by Lisa Van Allen, Kelly's girlfriend at the time. Van Allen testified that she started dating Kelly when she was 18 and that during their relationship, Kelly introduced a young lady whom he claimed was his 16-year-old neighbor into their life. During Kelly's 2008 trial, prosecutors alleged that Kelly and his inner circle, including McDavid and another co-defendant Milton Brown, had paid out hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years to retrieve tapes showing Kelly engaging in illegal activities with young people. The prosecution claimed this was part of a larger conspiracy to cover up Kelly's crimes and obstruct justice. Tiffany Henyard, a public official, hired Brendan to defend her case, which has been met with mixed reactions. Many people in Dalton are questioning her judgment and wondering why she would hire a lawyer with such a controversial past. Her own legal team seems to be bailing on her, and the mayor has resigned citing financial strain. Two witnesses chose to lie, implicate this man, and drag him through this experience from 2019 until today. The legal team of Mayor Tiffany Henrietta Henderson has been involved in a scandal that has raised questions about her transparency and accountability as a public official. She has been accused of financial mismanagement, misuse of public funds, and a lack of transparency in her administration. Her legal team is now at the center of an ongoing FBI corruption investigation, and it is unclear whether her lawyer, Brinley, will be able to save her or destroy her for good. Clips showing Brinley attending Doughton Village board meetings with Henner have been circulating. The two criminal lawyers sat next to Henner the entire meeting and even went into the board's closed executive session. This raises concerns about the village's potential use of the lawyers for her criminal defense. Municipal attorney Odon, who represents the four trustees fighting with Henner, believes that the criminal lawyers had no standing to sit on the board and paying them out of village funds would be illegal. This could be the beginning of the end for Henrietta, as her legal team is in disarray and the FBI probe hangs over her head. Tiffany Hoard's tenure in politics has been anything but smooth, with numerous scandals and controversies that have called her leadership and ethics into question. One of the most significant controversies surrounding Henrietta has involved allegations of financial mismanagement, which fueled widespread distrust and led to intense scrutiny of her financial dealings. Henrietta's administration has been accused of refusing to release spending records, a violation of state transparency laws. Even when the Illinois Attorney General Quamro Leal's office ordered the village to turn over these documents, she and her allies resisted raising red flags. In Cook County Circuit Court, a judge ordered Doton to hand over dozens of pages of documents, including credit card statements, that painted damning picture between July and November 2023 alone. In addition to the scandal, Henrietta is now entangled in a civil lawsuit involving allegations of sexual harassment during a work trip to Las Vegas. The lawsuit filed in April 2024 names both Henrietta and a village trustee as defendants, according to the former assistant who filed the suit. In conclusion, the legal team's involvement in the ongoing FBI corruption investigation and the scandal surrounding Henrietta Henderson's administration could be the final nail in the coffin for her reputation. Though Brinley is Henyard's criminal defense attorney, hired after the FBI served subpoenas on the village and township earlier this year, he blames Henyard's top aide, Keith Freeman. A former employee claims to have experienced disorientation and extreme pain after having dinner with an unidentified trustee on a Vegas trip. She woke up the next morning in the trustee's hotel room with no memory of how she got there and was experiencing physical discomfort. Officer Byron Miles, part of a $1 million security detail, filed a separate complaint that the trustee called and face-teamed him the night of the alleged assault and boasted about betting on the woman. Miles requested the trustee switch to a video call to see the situation for himself as a law enforcement officer. The trustee then panned the camera toward a bed, showing a partially undressed woman and moving the camera to various private areas of the woman's body. Mayor Hanyard is in a situation where she feels like she's under attack because she is. Mayor Tiffany Henyard's role in the aftermath of an assault on a former assistant has been widely condemned, with many calling for her resignation. The trust involved in the case has denied the allegations, claiming that he was trying to help his colleague who he believed was intoxicated. However, evidence presented in the lawsuit, including a FaceTime call in which the trustee allegedly boasted about the assault, paints a more sinister picture 
Tiffany Henyard's decision to hire Bo Brenly has raised questions about his shady past and controversial involvement in the R. Kelly case. As the FBI probe continues and her legal team falls apart, it is becoming increasingly clear that Henyard may have made the biggest mistake of her career. The future looks bleak for the Doton mayor. And we are so grateful for having the honor and the chance to defend him. Let us know what you think about this in the comment section. And do not forget to subscribe.